it is my educated guess that I am a descendant of enslaved people. I say this for two reasons. Number one, both of my parents are from South Carolina, one of the entry points for the transatlantic slave trade. And number two, neither of my parents can trace our origins beyond South Carolina. Needless to say, I don't think my ancestors came here by choice. Fortunately, I've been able to trace my maternal lineage using DNA analysis as a geneticist. And this is important as it's enabled me to recover information about my ancestry that was lost due to practices of enslavement. But what if I told you that the same process of DNA analysis has been used to show that everyone in this room today is related? Well, we kind of are. Scientists have been able to trace the maternal origin of humanity back to Southern Africa to one woman whom anthropologists have nicknamed mitochondrial Eve. And this is an artist's rendition. Eve lived between 100 and 200,000 years ago, and her descendants eventually moved out of Africa to populate the world as we know it. Our understandings of the origin of people of the African diaspora is possible simply because Eve and her descendants persisted. Well, persistence has also been central to my narrative. As a black girl from Detroit, where less than 13% of high school graduates go on to get a college degree, and even less a PhD, I am an unlikely success. My existence has required that I push the envelope, which can be thought of as going beyond what is normal in order to achieve something exceptional. Today, I would like to share with you three ways that I push the envelope in the sciences. Increasing the presence of people of color in the STEM disciplines is central to my purpose. One way that I do this is by applying for grants that not only fund my scientific interests, but they also provide a stipend for my students so that they can conduct research with me. My grant currently is funded by the Department of Defense and it aims to understand pathways used by near infrared light that promote wound healing. However, this is not my first grant. And over the years, my students have gone on to get PhDs in the STEM disciplines. I even have some right now that are enrolled in PhD programs in genetics at some of the top schools in our nation. When my students leave my lab, they know how to navigate two problems often faced by students of color in the sciences. Number one, stereotype threat, and number two, microaggressions. This leads me to the first way that I push the envelope in the sciences, which is by working relentlessly to increase the presence of people of color in STEM. The next way that I push the envelope in the sciences is by leading change. So what do I mean by that? I'm simply referring to finding solutions to problems that plague your community. The COVID-19 pandemic has provided ample opportunity for us to lead change. In March of 2020, the world was forced into quarantine, something many of us have never experienced, nor will be prepared for. Unfortunately, around that same time, two unfortunate events happened. In March of 2020, Breonna Taylor, black woman, 25 years old, emergency medical technician, was killed unlawfully when police raided her apartment in Louisville, Kentucky, and shot her eight times. And then only two months after, in May of 2020, George Floyd, black man and father, was murdered when an officer kneeled on his neck for a minimum of eight minutes and 46 seconds. All of this being recorded and released to the public for view. As a black woman at a black woman's institution, I saw the impact of these events on my students' lives and this provided an opportunity for me to lead change. After some thought, I had a conversation with the president of Spelman College, Dr. Mary Campbell Schmidt, who asked me to submit a short proposal. And in four days, I created Spelman's inaugural data science summer research program. And so you may be asking, how is data science going to help students, particularly during a pandemic? And what is data science? These are great questions. Allow me to first start with the explanation of data science. 
It's the application of computer science and math to large sets of data. And you can use these tools in order to extract information. One example of data science in action is fraud protection. So have you ever gone shopping? You were making a large purchase. And you knew you had the money in the bank, but your transaction was declined. Or you went out of town and you didn't notify your bank. And you made a purchase and your transaction was declined. Well, this was data science in action. On the back end, a computer scientist and mathematician worked together to create an algorithm which flagged your purchases as unlikely and required that you verify that purchase before they would cover the payment. Focusing on data science during the pandemic was important for a variety of reasons. But perhaps the most important was because students of color are particularly underrepresented in the field of data science. Of those currently studying data science, only 30% are women. And while black and Latino people represent approximately 31% of the US population, they compose only 12% of those currently studying data science. And so this points to the underrepresentation of both people of color and women in the discipline. And so bringing this study of this particular discipline to a black woman's college during the pandemic solved a couple problems. First, it provided us with the opportunity to train students in this discipline, hopefully opening up their interest to the field. Second, thanks to the Office of the President, we were able to provide students with a stipend for their participation. And this was important because many of them had lost their jobs as a result of the pandemic. Another reason why focusing on data science amongst our population at Spelman was important is because our students also lost their summer internships. And so having this program in the summer enabled them to recoup all of this. As participants in Spelman's data science program, students were trained in the use of computational coding, and they applied this as they worked in small groups, which were led by a faculty member at Spelman, and they worked on real-world problems using real-world data. They also had the opportunity to strengthen their data science network, as on a weekly basis, they got to engage with data scientists from some of the top companies in the nation. Dell, Facebook, the Southern Company, and more. This in and of itself would have made the program a success, but there was still the problem of the racial tensions that were present as we entered the pandemic, and I knew that these weighed heavy on my students. And so in order to address this, I implemented contemplative practices within the data science program. These are activities like yoga, meditation, and setting intentions all of which require us to turn inward and have been shown to reduce psychosocial stress. These are stressors from something that could be as small as learning a new scientific language or something as large as the trauma from racial tensions. Incorporating contemplative practices within a summer program is actually quite novel and doing it at a black women's college even more so. And so, in order to assess the impact of contemplative practices on students, I assess their understanding and use of contemplative practices, both before the program, at the middle, and at the end of the program. And results of the analysis were astounding. By the middle of the program, students reported an increase in their understanding of what contemplative practices were. And by the end of the program, students reported a significant increase in their intent to use and use of contemplative practices. I currently have a grant under review at the National Science Foundation, which aims to assess the impact of contemplative practices on students learning in the field of data science. So wish me luck. The last way that I push the envelope in the sciences is by defying the odds. Allow me to leave you with a few statistics. Within the sciences, while black women, well, in the U.S. population, represent 6% of our nation, they only represent 2% of those that go on to get a PhD in genetics. When you look at tenured STEM faculty, black women represent only approximately 
1%. And only a tenth of that 1% are black women that are department chairs. As the chair of the Department of Biology at Spelman College and geneticist, I defy these odds as I simply pursue my research interests and work with students and encourage them to enter the field of the sciences. And so I would like to also encourage you to think about your statistics. What are your firsts? What are your numbers? And just remember that the universe all of it comes together in order to help you achieve that goal. And so in closing, I would just like to remind you of three ways that you can push the envelope. One, by diversifying the sciences. Two, by leading change. And number three, by defying the odds. My education has brought me here before you today and has allowed me to accomplish some great things. And so I would be remiss if it, I did not acknowledge both the institution that made me, Tennessee State University, and the college that pays me, Spelman College. Thank you.